one second after liftoff. A hard hit in a football game. When you see someone, bang. Oh, you know, you kind of cringe because you have the empathy to know if that had been me, <laughs> I'd have been hurt. This was the impact that engineers had noticed while reviewing images of the launch on the second day of the flight. They knew on the second day of the mission that a piece of foam hit the wing leading edge, that it probably weighed, probably was the size of a small briefcase and probably weighed two pounds. The foam came from the base of a ramp that connected the external tank to the orbiter. It was foam from the same area that had endangered the shuttle Atlantis three months earlier. But that was all the engineers knew. There was also an uncertainty about where the foam had hit. Was it the front of the wing where the carbon panels were? Was it the tile acreage on the bottom? Or was it the landing gear door? Rodney Rocha was the division. On the fifth day of the mission, the debris assessment team, including Rocha, made an initial estimate that the fragment of foam was several hundred times larger than average. This was a big foam strike. It was the biggest one anyone had ever seen. It was a large piece, clearly came off, hit the underside of the wing, and no one knew where it hit. On the eighth day of the mission, the crew was informed of the incident as part of a routine email. It said, in part, this item is not even worth mentioning, other than wanting to make sure that you're not surprised by it in a question from a reporter. There is absolutely no concern for entry. But Rodney Rocha was very concerned, and his requests for additional images were denied. We, were, we felt we were in a topsy-turvy world. It's like someone saying, I want you to tell me how bad that car accident is that you just heard out the window. And you, I want you to tell me if we need an ambulance or not. And you say, well, I'll go look out the window. And he said, and someone says, no, you may not look out the window. You do your analysis first, and you tell me if you need to call an ambulance first. It's a lot of trouble to call an ambulance. You tell me, you do an analysis first. You tell me an answer first. How can you possibly get out of that, that kind of uncertainty? It's impossible. On day nine, the mission managers met to resolve the foam issue. Their meeting was recorded. Okay, yeah, good morning and welcome to the MMT. Okay, go ahead, John. Okay. We've received uh, you know, the data from the systems integration guys. The analysis is not complete, but I'm kind of just jumping to the conclusion of all that. But we do not see any kind of uh, you know, safety of flight issue here yet in, in anything that we've looked at. No safety flight, no issue for this mission, nothing that's going to do different. I don't know. Just a turn around. That's it. All right, any questions on that? So this is foam, like the stuff on the external fuel type, and it doesn't weigh a thing. I mean, this is, this is almost weightless. And I think that even among very smart engineers, there is a very human perceptual quality here that this doesn't weigh anything, so what if it hits you? But after the accident, the investigation team took a harder look at the phone. I said, Doc, you want a Nobel Prize in physics? You know, <laughs> let's just do some high school arithmetic here, okay? We knew that the time, the transit time for the phone was, I think, 0.16 seconds. Here's how fast it's going, okay? And we do some simple high school physics. The distance is equal to one half AT squared. You can calculate the acceleration, you calculate the velocity it would impart a force of roughly 3,000 pounds, you know, roughly a ton of force. But in fact, NASA management claimed they didn't understand this. I mean, th this was very trivial stuff. And the analogy they always use was as if a styrofoam cooler on a car in front of you in a pickup truck or something blows out on the road and hits your windshield when you're going 70 miles an hour, what happens? And the answer is nothing happens. The styrofoam breaks up in little pieces and falls off, it doesn't break your windshield. We had a picture of the crew. Foam did it. 
And yeah, there was resistance to that. People didn't want to believe it. And until they demonstrated it, they didn't really believe it. NASA has this, this terrible expression called, it's in family. In other words, we've seen this before. It never did anything before. I don't think it'll do anything now. The investigation board assembled parts from other shuttles to devise a conclusive test. Everyone agreed the leading edge of the wing was probably where the phone had struck. The board went ahead and constructed a life-size model of the wing with plans to test fire fragments of foam at it at different speeds and angles. I had engineers at NASA, very smart people, saying, you know, they're going to fire a piece of foam at that wing, and it's going to bounce off. Foam can't do that. And these were not dumb people. These were intelligent people. But the physics of it was counterintuitive. It was a very powerful emotional moment because we'd done all this work for months to get everything ready to do this test. It was very hot. Down there in San Antonio, it was, you know, 100 degrees every day, and the place is full of snakes and, and stuff. It's all outdoors. And so I was standing there with all these other officials, and uh, two astronauts came up to stand right behind me. And they counted it down to the firing of the gun, and the gun, you know, boom. And we looked, and all of a sudden, there was this giant hole in the wing leading edge. And at first, I went, yes. And then I went, oh, because um, part of me said, okay, you've demonstrated it. But then part of me said, oh, this is how these people actually died. There was one engineer who came from Johnson Space Center, and she actually had tears in her eyes because she, you know, didn't want to believe that the foam did it, but this was so dramatic a test, it showed that there was just no doubt. After the accident, people said, well, during launch, a problem happened and it was all over for the crew then. It was not all over then. And you don't look to spy satellites or anything like that. It